people that we don't get to see every week. And I'm excited to see your faces. Y'all, just so you know, um, if you're worried about turning on your camera because you're like, I've got my jammies on or whatever, it don't bother me none. Turn it on. I want to see your faces actually, if possible. If you are nude, um, prefer not to see your face. That's sort of the rule of thumb. But really, you know, even if you're driving, even if you've got uh, people in the background, whatever, it's fun to see y'all and connect with you. Um, Caitlin, checking in from your office. It's impressive. Uh, it's just fun to get to see each other. This is one of those weeks where, listen, if you're at home, you probably have kids at your house. If you're at work, it might be slow. It might be crazy. We get it. We know how it works, but it's just great for us to get to see you guys. And you do not have to worry about looking great for these calls ever. It's our goal that you just get trained. So send your last minute uh, invites to your team and send them a reminder text with the link. And then honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and um, introduce you guys to Melissa. Just so you know, like Melissa is one of those people in Plexus. I remember the first time I ever heard her train and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, it, it was a leadership training. It was for jewels and above. And I remember, remember being like, it was one of those incidences where I knew, okay, Plexus chooses really smart people to do trainings. She did a full training. I took tons of notes and I never even realized that like she had been a teacher before. And so it, I honestly really was like this. It, she's like a hardcore professional speaker. So here's what I love about Mel, because since that time, she has become like my real life friend, like Plexus or not, she's my friend. And so a few things you need to know about her one, and this is one of my favorite things. She's an Enneagram eight. And so I tell Melissa all the time, because she'll say, oh, she can be such a punk, she can be such a B. And I'm like, no, no, your eightness gives me strength. And Andrea would probably say the same thing. We'll be in a conversation and she'll say, Becky, you need to tell them da, 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 da. And I'm like, I do, I do, hype me up, I can do it. So she provides a lot of wisdom and strength. Something you guys might not know is that she has just come off of a long season was it four years on advisory board? It was six years. She was one of the longest serving advisory board members ever. And I, I'm not even, I'm not trying to brag on Melissa. You need to know that when you saw good things get pushed through at Plexus in the last six years, Melissa was one of the people behind it. She pushes very hard for our field with our corporate executives. She takes up like, our cause, and that's the cause that she is pushing forward with corporate. She just finished serving in June. That's when she rolled off. Um, she deserves a break, but she's not taking one. She has continued to have one of the fastest growing teams in Plexus, and she is a diamond with a lot of jewel support. So she's a leader of leaders. Um, there's a lot I could say. You're a mom, um, you're a wife, you're a believer in Jesus but I'm going to go ahead and, and pass it over to you because I'm really looking forward to having you train us today. Well, Take thanks. Away. Thanks, Becky. I'm going to need you to like jump on some of my team calls and introduce me <laughs> on some of my team calls. Very, I'll be your hype girl. Yeah, that's very generous. Thank you for being so generous with your words for me. I appreciate you. I'm super excited to be here with you guys. Becky and Andrea are two of my closest friends, the, one that, the ones that I celebrate life with, the ones that I go to in crisis. They're just my people. Thank God for Plexus and this opportunity for bringing these women into my life. So I want you guys to turn on your cameras if you can. I mean, we got Miss Topknot in her, in her bathrobe over there. So we can do it. Turn on those cameras. It's going to help me so much if I can see your face. Also, I want you guys to be chiming in in the chat. If you hear something that means something to you, that inspires you, something that you want to cling to and use at a later time in your life or in your business. And I want to start out by hearing from some of you. My question is, what are some of your team's soundtracks? Meaning, what are some things that you guys collectively 
say to your people, something that you guys hear each other say frequently, that it's like, come like verbiage for your team. So for example, on our team, we say things like everything is figure outable. What are some, what, some soundtracks that you have? As you're thinking of them, drop them in the chat. Everything is always working out for me. We say that a lot on our team. Um, activity over results. We say something like, good, go for no. I love don't make it weird. I've been saying that a lot lately. I probably have picked that up from one of you guys. Keep it simple. Awesome. Have you guys heard? I'm sure the fortune is in the follow-up. Yeah. Um, maybe you guys have heard one on our team is who's your 76. Have you, have any of you guys seen my who's your 76 training? If not, you're going to want to go check that out on YouTube for sure. It's an oldie, but a goodie. And that we use that a lot. Who's your 76. Um, we say a lot of times we'll say legacy and impact. That's why we're here. That's our vision is legacy and impact. What about learn while you earn? Have you guys heard that one? The fortune's in the follow-up. People work harder for praises than raises. All of these are soundtracks that we say a lot on our team. These are important things that you guys want to have. I hope that you guys will come up with some soundtracks that you are speaking into your team as you are becoming leaders and as you are growing a business. Um, one of the main soundtracks that we have and what we're going to be talking about today is failing forward. This is monumental. This is one of the most important soundtracks, I believe, that you can speak into yourself, into your team, into your children. And we are going to look at that and we are going to really dig into that today. I love what you guys put in the chat. Leaders are readers. That's so good. Love your people where they are. Done is better than perfect because perfect never gets done. Oh my gosh. Sapphire, I'm so glad you're here. You listen to me. I love it. I love it. It's so true. We say that a lot on our team. Okay, now I want to hear from you guys before we dig into the meat and the heart of the training. Talk to me about one thing that is holding you back from reaching your goals. What is it? If you're willing to share, share it. What's the one thing that's holding you back? Is it that you don't feel like you're good at recruiting, that you don't have the verbiage that you need? Is it that you feel like you don't have time? Is it feel like you don't have influence? Like what, what is the thing? Consistency, overthinking, so good. Trying to raise the dead, uh-huh. Been there, been there. All these things, I'm relating to all of them. Building confidence and sharing the comp plan, okay? Stinking thinking, all right, good. Anyone else? What's holding you back? What is your biggest thing that is stopping you from reaching your goals? If you didn't answer, I want you to jot that down and I want that to be something that you reflect on. I want you to be thinking about what is holding you back. You don't have time to develop leaders, time, no business builders to link arms with. Okay, good. I want you guys to be thinking about that. I want you to be reflecting on that. As we are talking about today, something that has the potential to change your perspective. And if you can change your perspective, I truly believe that you can change your life. Okay, now I realize who I'm on this call with, Becky Page, who knows a lot about how our brains work. Okay, she's way smarter than me, but I'm gonna talk like I am like, the expert on the call, even though she really is more the expert on the call when it comes to how our brains work. But okay, let's think about regret. You guys can, re you can regret two things. You can regret doing something and maybe doing it badly. Maybe you would say you're failing at this thing. Okay. So you can regret doing something and not doing it well, or you can regret not doing the thing. You can regret not doing something, not saying I love you, not going on the trip, not taking the shot. This is how our brain works, okay? We can regret doing it, maybe falling flat or not doing it at all. And we think that what is going to hurt the most, we think that failing is gonna be more painful 
than regret. But what happens is when we don't do something, okay, when we're not doing the thing, our brain needs an answer. It needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. And when you do something wrong or when you fail, you have an end and you can move on from it because at least you had a culmination and at least you had an outcome. But listen, you guys, when you don't do something, say you choose to remain stagnant or inactive or you don't make a decision, then your brain never has an outcome. In fact, you have this like, infinite amount of possible outcomes. And this is why that people like on their deathbeds are riddled with regret and the possibilities of what could have been. And it's, it's because that will haunt you for the rest of your life because your brain literally cycles through all of the potential outcomes, knowing that it's never going to land. So it's this endless cycle of what could have been. And so if you know this, and if you know that this is how our brain works, then I want you guys to approach this training, our time together, understanding that it is scarier to have a lifelong regret of what could have happened than to just do something and fall down and fail, okay? So this is going to be like radical ownership, radical activity. These are the things that we are talking about today. So in the book, Failing Forward by John Maxwell, if you've not read this book, you make it the first book of 2023. I promise it will change your life. It will change your business. Okay. So in this book, John Maxwell asked the question, if your perception of and response to failure were changed, what would you attempt to achieve? If your perception of and your response to failure were changed, what would you attempt to achieve? I want to know. Tell me in the chat. What would you attempt to achieve? Would you attempt to achieve um, in your business? Let's talk about in your business specifically. Would you attempt to achieve a uh, convention contest is going to launch soon? Would you attempt to achieve maybe the top prize in the convention contest? Maybe would you attempt to achieve your next rank in your business? Maybe there's a dollar amount. Maybe it's developing a certain number of leaders. Maybe it's being on that beach in Mexico. You have, you have plenty. It doesn't matter where you are in your business. I don't care if, you, if you're brand new today. You have time to earn that trip. It is possible. It is possible. Okay? So let's talk about failure tolerance because some of you guys, you have a real low failure tolerance and you give up way too easy. Failure intolerance has the potential to cost you your dreams and your success. And I'm just going to keep it real. It also has the potential to cost you tons of money, so much money, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. When you tell yourself that something is not possible for you, which then results in you not taking risks and getting out of your comfort zone. There's zero upside to that, none. All right, so let's talk about how we can increase our failure tolerance because I've seen so many people quit way too early on their dreams. How about you? Have you guys seen people walk away way too early, whether it's in plexus or not? So in his book, Failing Forward, John Maxwell also says, one of the greatest problems people have with failure is that they are too quick to judge isolated situations in their lives and label them as failures. And instead they need to keep the big picture in mind. And this is so applicable in our business, right? These individual little tiny things that happen that make us feel like, oh, we're not good at this or, oh, I don't have the right verbiage for that. Or, oh, I thought I was going to develop her as a leader and she didn't end up becoming a leader. Or, oh, I can't get duplicate, like all these little tiny things happen and you're judging that and you're thinking that these are failures when if you would just like step back and take a big picture snapshot of what's going on, you're not failing. You're not failing. So think about it this way. You want to make money or maybe you want to lose weight or maybe you want to rank up or maybe you want to uh, feel better, be a better mom or a better wife. And maybe some of you guys want to step up in your community even. But the reality is, is we want it to be easy. 
don't we? I do. I want it to be easy, right? But what I've seen happen is that in these situations, we want the end result. We want to be able to get the thing. And we don't want to have to go through the process. We don't want to have to like do the work. We don't want to have to like climb the mountain and overcome the brain and evolve as a human being. We just want the result. And somehow it's like uh, some of you guys want the result and you're thinking just with time passing. So for example, I've been doing this for four years now. I should be a fill in the blank. Have you ever thought that before? I've been here for six years. I should be an emerald by now. Okay. Maybe some people think by effort. Well, I've reached out to 30 people this month or I got four, day pe four people in our three-day reset group. So you're thinking like, I want the result and you're not understanding that in order to get the result, you are going to have to fail. When was the last time that you were so insanely out of your comfort zone? When you were so like, you're going to bed at night and you cannot sleep because your brain is not turning off because you are doing something different and new, that you are playing on the edge of your ability because you're stretching yourself. It's so, it's literally so easy for me to post on Facebook and to make reels and to send messages that my upline feeds me. That's so easy, it's so easy for me to follow up with my people. On a scale of one to 10 in my comfort zone, that's literally a zero. That's not taking me out of my comfort zone at all. Guess what? It's also probably not going to grow me. You've got to be playing on the edge of your abilities You've got to be stretching out of your comfort zone if you want to push to the next level, okay? You guys, this was taught to us, right? So we were taught to avoid failure at all costs. We were literally taught that if you're failing a class, it's better to drop the class than to fail the class, right? That if you get an F on a test, it's the end, not the beginning, or that it's in some way a reflection of who you are. And I want you guys to imagine if we've been raised differently, that when you get an S, it's just the beginning, that that's just the start. That just means that there's more to learn. So we have to figure out what we don't know. And if we're taught to overcome these failures and to accumulate these failures and to develop a tolerance for our failures in this business, how much more would we be able to create in our lives if we had been taught this, how many of you have thought to yourself, well, I must not, I'm not good at follow-up. I'm not good at customer care. I'm not good at recruiting. I'm not good at retention. Well, I'm just not a good leader. Well, I just don't have influence. It's all these things in your mind that you're telling yourself. Well, I'm telling you like, or so many of you guys are waiting for instruction or you're waiting for your upline, or you're waiting for me to tell you how to get these things done, how to be better in those areas, but it's there. There's nothing new under the sun. Like you have to figure out you, Brittany, Holly, Chris, Lisa, Caitlin, Ellen, Monica, Tina, like you have to figure out how to get it done with your circumstances and your excuses and your mindset. And the way to figure out how to do it is to do it, is to do it. So think about it. Okay, if you know that you have to share with other humans about Plexus, but you're not doing that, because some of you actually aren't even doing that. Like you're not doing the bare minimum, which is like showing up, right? Or if you know you have to get duplication going on your team, or you know you've got to develop silvers, how do you figure out how to do it? How do you figure out how to do it? Well, there's tons of trainings on it. There's tons of books on it. Everything is figure outable. Stop being the victim and start taking radical responsibility for your life. Own it. Okay, I'm about to do like a tiny little on failing forward. And I want to talk to you about victim mindset. Because if it ain't for you, it's for someone else in your life that you need to share this message with, but I bet, I bet it's for you, okay? I bet it is, because in some areas, it is for me. 
for all of us. Okay, I want you to take the idea that you are a victim out of your circumstances and literally throw it in the trash can. If you are saying, if you're thinking in your head that you cannot cause your success to happen, you are not a victim of your circumstances, you're a victim of your thinking. You cannot tell me that there is one thing that I cannot do in Plexus, period. Doesn't, nothing, it doesn't matter. I can do anything and so can you. Do you wanna know how I know that you can? Because I can. And if someone else has, that means that you can too. So you get to decide, you're a victim or you're a business owner. Choose, right? You don't have to be a victim for one more minute. You can take ownership of your Plexus business. And all of the excuses as to why you can't are all the reasons why someone else is doing the thing. So I can 100%, I can guarantee you, someone busier, more overwhelmed, more tired, less healthy, someone who has more kids and works more hours, someone who has a sick or dying family member, someone who just lost a loved one, someone who sends their kids off to college, there's someone saying goodbye, their, their child is a college senior and, or a, a high school senior and they're using that as an excuse. There's a mama that's sending her baby to kindergarten for the first time. There's someone who is pregnant, someone who is in pain, someone has no support from their family, right? You name it, I can guarantee it. There's someone else in that situation that is doing this and they're doing it well. So are you gonna let these things hold you back from your success? So remember, I want you guys to remember what you focus on expands. Let that be one of your team soundtracks, what you focus on expands, okay? So if your reason not to is what you are focusing on, guess what? You're probably not going to reach your goals, okay? So back to mindset and failing forward. Take the victim mindset, take the victim thinking out. Where you are is your responsibility. And if you want to be, if you are happy where you are, great. If you've reached your goals, awesome. But if you want to be growing Let's own that, okay? So, failing forward, any true progress, any true big extraordinary possibility is going to learn, is going to come by uh, learning by doing. You got to get into action. You got to get into activity, okay? And when you get into activity, that's going to mean lots of failure. So start implementing the basics of what's out there, you guys, and get into that massive activity. Like sometimes we have people that are with us and they've been on our team for two years or for five years or for eight years. And it's like, we just need to go back to the basics. You don't need to learn something new, right? You need to go back to the basics. If you have ever sponsored one person, then you know how to sponsor someone. So we've got to get back to the place where we're trusting ourselves. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And if you think that you can't, again, everything is figure outable. Get in there, take ownership and figure it out. And you guys, I have lived this out. So again, if I can, if Andrea can, if Becky can, if Ellen can, if, if someone else has done it, let that be inspiration to show you that you can too. I have failed so many times. I've, I've not only failed so many times, but I've failed so many people. I failed, if, it were, if this were my team right here, if it was a bunch of people on my team, this is where I would stop and I would say, I failed some of you because I have. But I am learning and growing from that failure. I have failed customers. I've given, I've literally signed people up and totally forgot about them and never, never followed up with them. I have done opportunity events, you guys. Okay, let me tell you this. I've done opportunity events in a funeral home. Yeah, you heard me because that's our small business is a funeral home. Now y'all woke up, right? Y'all woke up. We started doing opportunity events in my house. Then we outgrew those. Then we went free funeral home. Literally, we had hundred people in our funeral home every month and it was hot and it was crowded we were like overstuffing the place people were literally falling asleep people were like walking in and going this is too crowded in here and like leaving like i've i've failed i have messed up and failed with my leaders and my jewels and my team so many times so many times 
But I want you guys to think about this for yourself. And I want you to be honest. Like, what is your tolerance for failure? Honest, if you could just like give, give yourself a score, like one through 10, what would your tolerance for failure be? Be honest with yourself. What do you guys think? On a scale of one to 10. Five, five, one, four. Oh, hey, Jill. Yay. Okay. Three, five, eight, four. Okay. Okay, good. All right. When you fail, does it ignite you? Does it cause you to do more? Does it make you want to study harder and learn more and practice more and try more things? Or does it send you into quitting, whining, complaining, making excuses? Or avoiding so that you can't fail? When you fail, does it ignite you? Or does it send you like, eh, I messed that up and I'm like full body sweat over here and I'm freaking out. So I'm just gonna like duck out for a minute. And then like, I ignored that one customer. And so now I'm really bad at customer care. And so my thought, is that I'm really bad at customer care. So my result is that I have these customers that are quitting, right, all the time because I'm not taking care of my customers because we know our thoughts drive our actions, which drive our results, right? So I want you guys to know that one trap that I see in this business is the I'm still deciding. Okay, like I'm still deciding what I'm going to do. I'm still deciding if I'm going to like jump over to Instagram and start doing reels. I'm still deciding, like we're still trying to figure out if we're going to, you know, do these online opportunity events. I'm still deciding if I'm going to um, host people over to my house. I'm still deciding if I uh, am like smart enough to figure out this compensation plan and talk about it. It's, it's like this, um, place where like, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to talk to my dream teamer. Like the one that I know that if she did this with me, it would take my business to the next level. And I just want you guys to know if you're still trying to figure, like if you're constantly telling yourself, like, I'm still deciding, um, um, and, and you're never taking action that is avoidance. That's not risking failure. You're avoiding failure and your failure tolerance is low. So people with a high failure tolerance are like all in with new things and new experiences. So this is Melissa. Like, okay, so here's our monthly incentive. Oh my gosh. It doesn't even have to make sense to me. I don't even know what we're doing. It doesn't matter, but link arms with me and we're going to do it, right? Like, oh, uh, the company comes out with I don't know, some newer things lately, like this has been a couple of years, like a new fast start program or Plexus perks, or uh, that, like I said, the convention contest is coming out. Every single one of you, I, I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is, but when they launch that at the beginning of the new year, like all in new experiences, new things, fail forward, figure it out, make it work. Okay. And then, okay. I know I've been talking forever. I'm sorry. I, am I okay? Cause I have more. <laughs> <laughs> like starting to like, you know, when you hear your own voice for so long. Okay. This is really good though. So I want y'all to like, if y'all have tuned me out, lean in on this one. Okay. If you never fail, like literally, if you're just doing the things that make you super comfortable, because I know you are, I know you, I know what you're doing. I know you're not doing anything scary today. I know you haven't done anything scary in the past 30 days. I know probably most of y'all have not done something new, radical, insanely scary in the past six months. I know you. I know you probably haven't. Okay? So if you never fail, you will never know your limits. You've got to literally push yourself to fail to know where your limit is on all of the things and to know what you're capable of. Does that make sense? If you set your goal too low and you hit it, you'll never know what could have been, what you could have done because you've never pushed yourself to that failing point. 
And so when you set a goal that you'll most likely fail at doing, you are instead going to hit the point that is your limit in that moment. Does that make sense? If you're setting your goal here and you're hitting it every time, you're literally blocking yourself from the possibility. Because if you set your goal up here instead and you're pushing to that goal, you might actually land here, right? You might fall short of that goal, but you're gonna push beyond the limit that you are trapping yourself in. You guys, we used to talk on our team all the time. Here's an area where I failed. We used to talk all the time on our team about big, hairy, audacious goals. Okay, we talk about the BHAG. And I stopped because I had people on my team say like, I need realistic goals. And if I set these goals and I miss the goals, then I like crumble and I feel like a failure and I give up. They literally would say that to me. Like if I set the big goals and I don't hit them, then I feel like a failure. And, I, and then I feel like I can't do this. But here's the thing, if you set a goal too low and if you don't risk doing anything, then you never know what could have been. And so the only way to find out what you could have been or can be is by pushing those limits, which means you've got to be, you've got to be willing to fail. So um, I want you guys to understand that actually failure is harmless. Like when you fail, you feel an emotion and your emotions like this isn't, it's not fun to be sad, but it's not going to kill you. We used to always say on my team, too, now I'm thinking of all the soundtracks we'd say on our team. We'd always say, but did you die? <laughs> we would say that on our team a lot, but did you die? You know, embarrassment's not going to ruin your life. Like maybe you do a live and something crazy happens and you're a little embarrassment or embarrassed, you're going to be fine. Um, taking a risk and feeling that adrenaline rush, it's just a feeling like, you're going to survive it. You might even thrive. And so, you know, you feel those feelings, but then you just keep moving forward. And so when you increase your failure tolerance, your like whole mindset shifts and you become a lot more willing to get into action. And then when you embrace that potential and to like, at least allow yourself to fall short or fail, that's kind of like when your motivation and your energy does increase. And so a lot of people will like become defeated before they even start. They're going to procrastinate. They avoid, they don't have any energy behind anything because of the fear of failing. But when you're willing to do that and you want to fail and you want to learn from your failures, all of a sudden we have that energy behind it. You want to do the thing. And even if you fail, you don't let that fear hold you back. Okay. So I want you guys to be willing, like go back and think about where, what number did you give yourself on that scale of one to 10 for your failure tolerance? And are you willing to spend some time increasing that failure tolerance? So when the world is telling you, like, you've got to avoid failure at all costs, because you're going to feel, you're going to have those thoughts. You're going to feel those uncomfortable emotions. You know, I'm asking you to chase after that feeling like make friends with it. It's not going to go away. So you just got to make friends with that feeling and learn to tolerate that. And so fall on your face, set the goal and don't hit it. Literally set the goal. Don't hit the goal. And don't tell yourself, well, I'm such a big loser. I'm such a failure. I really wanted to earn the black tie gala. And all I earned was that I'm literally making things up was the, you know, $1,000 check. Oh, you big loser. You earned the $1,000 check. You really stink. You're such a loser because you're not going to be at the gala. I'm sorry, what? If you wouldn't have set the goal for the gala, you wouldn't have hit the $1,000 check and you would have just gotten the $25 store voucher, right? <laughs> so set the big goals, tolerate the failure, miss the mark and try again and again and again and increase that tolerance and know that high achievers are not deterred by like mistakes and problems and errors because they don't even see setbacks as failures. And they recognize that like three steps forward and two steps back still equals that one step forward. And so they're willing to overcome to keep moving forward. And stagnation is like, the worst. And I know a lot of you guys are out there probably feeling stagnant, but like, I want you to decrease that toleration. 
So increase your failure tolerance, decrease your stagnation tolerance because not doing something, avoiding, that doesn't even get to count as failure. Like a failure deserves more credit because you actually have to do something to fail. Otherwise, if you're just being stagnant and not doing, you're just failing ahead of time, which isn't even a legit fail. It's just like staying stuck and avoiding. Um, so let's not do that. So I want you guys to be willing to like push your limits, decide where are you willing to fail more? What would happen in your life? How would your life be different? How would your business be different if your failure tolerance was a 10? What would you be doing different today? What would you be doing that you're not doing today if your failure tolerance was a 10? What would you be willing to do? I want you guys to think about that for a second. If my failure tolerance was a 10, what would I be doing? What would I be willing to do? Hmm. Would I be willing to learn the compensation plan? Would I be willing to learn how to communicate that compensation plan effectively? Would I be going and sharing this compensation plan and this business opportunity with people that are smarter than me, more influential than me? You guys want to know how I'm so successful in Plexus? I'm recruiting people that are smarter than me. <laughs> They're like, they're amazing. I'm serious. Those are the people you should be going after, right? The people that are more influential, the people that are going to make a bigger impact because legacy and impact, that's my soundtrack. That's my vision. Okay. You'd host a huge meeting at your house, invite local with business. I'm looking at the uh, comments right now. You'd be unstoppable. What does that mean, Sheila? Like in what way, what would you do? Tell me more about that. Schedule face-to-face -face meetings, calling dream teamers on the phone, having business conversation, recruiting high-level business partner partners. Maybe it's that you guys are really, really good at talking to people about the products and you bring product users in, but maybe in your willingness to fail forward, you're going to commit to having the conversation about the business with every single one of them. Like every single person that jumps in to use the products, I'm going to, now remember, don't be weird. That's a whole nother training, but you're committing to figure out how you can have a conversation about this business. If you're growing a business, you've got to be willing to talk to people about the business. So I'm not just talking about like being sloppy and doing things for the sake of doing them. I'm talking about planning, executing paying attention to what you learn from failing forward. If you talk to three people about the business and no one's interested, you got to tweak your strategy. You got to fail forward. You've got to increase your skill set. You got to, you really got to like, um, continue to learn and grow. So a lot of people are thinking like success is the only thing that moves us forward. You guys, but I hope today I've been able to flip the script on, um, what actually moves you forward are the attempts. We learn by the attempts. We learn by our actions. That's what moves us, moves us forward. Whether we get the result or not, we are moving forward. So how many fails have you purposefully created for yourself over the last couple months? When was the last time you set an impossible goal and set up opportunities to fail? That's what I want you guys to take away from this call. I want you to increase your tolerance to failure, increase your ability to not get the result you want and to keep moving forward because so many of us do not get the results we want and we quit, okay? There's um, a per personal growth expert, um, Paul Meyer. He says that 90% of all who fail are not actually defeated. They simply quit. 90% of all who fail are not actually defeated. They simply quit. Think about that. So many of us want the results without the process. You guys, you want the money, you want the weight loss, you want the freedom, but you don't want to go through the process. But if someone was just handing out the results to you, what is even the point of your life? <laughs> right? Like if you just get in line and someone's like handing you the money or someone just gives you the perfect body, like haven't completely missed the point. You sign up for the big 
goals for the journey that it requires, for the failure it requires, for the strength that it requires, because that is what grows us. Let it be hard. It's supposed to be hard. The harder it is, the stronger you're going to get. And the easier it is to quit, the more proud that you're going to be when you don't, right? In the hard, if you stick with it and you keep going and you keep growing and learning, so step back from your results driven brain. And I want you guys to like sign up for the process, sign up for the process. Um, you know, I, I love quotes and I love this quote by Thomas Edison. And he says, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. So you guys see like quitting is where, where the failure comes. So allow yourself to think, allow yourself to dream, allow yourself to journal and reflect what would happen in your life if you had incredibly high failure tolerance. How would your life change if you guys were willing to fail forward and increase that tolerance? And I really hope that one of the soundtracks for your team moving forward, something that you guys say among each other when you're training, when you're coaching, is fail, is talking about failing forward because I really think that this has been one of the things that has catapulted my team into like it's a part of our culture it's a part of our stickiness like people stay because they don't feel like they're failures they just know that they're learning and growing and getting better and I really 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 want that for you guys too so I could literally talk forever, but I'm just going to stop. <laughs> y'all, I could literally, it's bad. Okay. Whatever. If y'all have any questions or comments or anything, just, you just let me know. I'm going to make I myself. Think, I would love if you're, if you've got time, I would love yeah. to let people ask questions. Yeah, um, sure. Or even do some processing. So if you've been processing while you've been listening to Mel, or if you've got a question for her, unmute yourself and you can speak. Okay. I have a question. I guess for me, it's sometimes you don't even, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I'm been in the process of learning things so I could be more aware. So what are some like sneaky things maybe self-sabotaging or your, I don't know how to explain it. Like, like some of the things you were saying, I wouldn't have said that I wouldn't have paired that with failing or, or feeling the fear of failure. So what are some things that are, um, that could be sneaky that you're kind of just setting the bar too low that you might not realize that you're doing it? Sorry, that took a minute to get out. No, that's such a good question. I think I would, I would ask you a question, Christy, and I would say, when was the last time that you, and you might not have a problem with failure tolerance. Like you, this might be something that you've got and you're okay with it. But I think I would ask the question, like, when was the last time that you set a goal so big for yourself? Like you were willing to set the big uncomfortable goal that you're like literally knowing and feeling like it, it's going to be like God, like it's going to be God that is going to make this goal happen. Right. And like, you're going to bed that night and you're like, I'm committed to this goal. I'm working towards this goal, but this is so scary. And I don't even see or understand how I'm going to reach it. But all I know is that I'm going to, I'm going to take this ownership and I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find a way. And then you literally relentlessly pursue that goal. Like, have you had that experience late, lately? If you have, then your literal body is going to tell you that you have, because you're going to have, like, you're going to, you're going to have immediately the doubt will creep in. Like the next day, you're going to be like, I'm going to adjust that goal. I'm, should I be doing this? I don't think I should be doing this. This probably isn't smart for me to do. And your brain's going to start thinking of all the excuses. I mean, Nate is going to be a senior next year. And, and Anna is, you know, it is, it is football season and she's cheering in all these games. And like, your brain is going to like try to talk you out of it because it's so big. And it's like that constant like mindset battle. So that would be, I think that's my question for you is like, what is it? I hope it's rank for y'all. It doesn't have to be, but like, I always hope it's ranking up. So when are you going to be Emerald, Christy? 
I don't even know your rank. What is your rank? Uh, Ruby. When are you going to be Emerald? That's the goal that makes me want to vomit is to do it in 2023. Okay, when in 2023? Um, December, in a year. In one year. Okay, how long have you... <laughs> how long have you been how long have you been with Plexus? Um it'll be 4 years coming up. Okay, awesome. I think that's a great goal, but typically typically your gut reaction first goal maybe that's the goal that's here, right? And so 12 months from now is going to give you a lot of space, right? So Christy, I would say like our big, hairy, audacious goal of being Emerald, you're a Ruby, being Emerald by December, I think your, your behaviors and your actions are going to do this. Bump, 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 bump. Like you're not going to take that radical activity, that radical ownership. You're going to probably stay, keep doing the same things like over, you're going to grow and learn and skill set. You're going to read some books. You're going to lead your team. You're going to recruit some people. I want you to be Emerald by July because I want you in Mexico. So I want you to literally take that goal and I want you to almost cut it in half. And I want you to think about how is that going to change? How is that going to change your activity? It's going to force you to. Yeah. And if you were on my team, I would say, Christy, you are going to be in Mexico. You are going to be Emerald by July. Now let's, let's figure it out. And we would plan it out and we would create a plan of action and there would be some accountability there. And then it would take you turning to your leaders and doing the same thing with your leaders. But I think that that goal, right, of December is going to keep you here. But if you push it to July, what happens if you hit in September? You know what I mean? Like, you're still pushing past. Like, are you a failure if you don't get there by July? Did you fail? That's the whole point. No, but you've got to push for it. You've got to work for it and watch where you land. And it's going to be so much farther ahead of where you would have originally landed had you not set the big, big goal. I have, I have no clue if I even answered your question, P.S. No, that's good. I have no idea, I'm sorry. If you, not you made me realize as you were talking, like my BHAG goal for this year was to be senior Ruby, but I noticed the past couple of months stuff happening and then my points going backwards that I stopped trying to get to senior Ruby. Okay. So you so, kind of just spoke to me. This is so good, Christy, because if you can change the way that you see failure, then you can gain the strength to keep running the race. Because this is, this is so normal. Like this is the most normal human behavior. You're realizing that goal is kind of like slipping farther and farther away. And then you just kind of become, it's so nice to be comfortable. You guys, it feels so good to just be complacent and keep going through the motions and keep, keep doing the comfortable things. But failure is the price that you pay for progress. It, it really is. And so you, in those moments where you're like, oh, this is happening, this is happening, and it's slipping farther away and I'm kind of becoming complacent. Uh-uh. That is when you have to dig deep and you've got to go. You really do. I feel like in this business, it's like, uh, it's like, if you want to take a stroll in your neighborhood, like you can, okay, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to take a walk. Well, I'm not going to probably have any obstacles. Like if I'm going to, I'm not going to have any problems. Like, no, but it's like, if I, if my goal is to climb Mount Everest, there's going to be some obstacles. There's going to be some things I have to overcome. So you want to take a stroll and you want to hit Emerald by December? Or do you want to climb Mount Everest? Do you want to fail? And like, let's go and let's set the goal for July. I feel like if you want to earn extra 100 or $200 with Flexus, awesome. Let's take a stroll around the block. 
and let's do it and be proud of it. But if you want to replace your income and become a jewel, freaking buckle up and let's get ready for the ride. Like it's going to take time, effort, the ability to overcome setbacks, but the view from the top and the lives that you will change and the legacy that you will leave behind is so worth it. Oh, I love that Sapphire. Fear gets a voice, but it doesn't get a boat. I love it. Do y'all have any other questions? I have something I want to say, Melissa. <clears throat> hey, hey, so fun. I'm like, I don't even know. Someone just sent me this link. I'm like, oh, I would love to be on one of your calls. But anyway, um, so I pushed for Emerald in July because it was, you know, the last month to push for it. And I, it was my big hair, hair you know, super... I think I was going to have to have a 400 point growth to go Emerald. And I was like, let's go, right? Because it's the last time. Let's just throw it all in. And I totally had that mentality. Like, I don't even, I don't care if, I mean, I'm going and I, my mentality was I'm going to pass that finish line, like bloody and like, I'm just going to go for it. And if I don't make it, I'm, I'm not going to sit, I'm, that's, at least I tried, right? And so, I mean, up until like 15 minutes to midnight, I was signing people up, you know, sending them a message, like, are you sure you don't want to try? And they're like, yeah, sure, I'll try that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> and so I was signing people, you know, I, I missed it by a hundred points, which I'm like, okay, really God? Like you could, that's only 20 people. Like if, I feel like if God wanted me to go Emerald, it could have totally happened, but it, it didn't. But in the, so, and I wasn't super, I mean, I was kind of proud of how I ended that because, you know, I put it all into it, but I didn't, I didn't self-implode the next month. You know, I kind of told myself, well, all right, now I know kind of what it takes. And I, I did think, like you said, that whole leadership lid, like there were things that I did on that last couple like that last week of the month that I've never done like I actually picked up the phone what <laughs> why is that so hard right and call people and like ask them would you you know what I'm going for a big scary goal this month I think I said I'm trying to create some magic in my business which is the phrase that Brooke kind of gave me which I loved because I don't like have you know being needy and whatever but it caused me to do, do things outside of my comfort zone. But now here's the point I'm in. Now I'm like, yes, I want to make Emerald, but I also want to maintain it. And I think I'm, I'm got to the point where when you said, when, you know, when you were asking her, when is your good, when are you going to do it? And I'm like, Ooh, I kind of slipped down into now that we have, you know, the whole year to earn it, right. <laughs> to get to, to um, Mexico. I kind of haven't had that imminent timeline at all I'm like whatever which is awful because I mean heck I'm gonna be back to July again and so I was trying to I was gonna ask you what am I telling myself but I think I know I'm telling myself I don't I don't want to try because then I'll fail again a hundred percent right just is that you. Yes. yeah this literally this call was just for you it was yeah. like a goal without a plan is just a like, wish. That's not right, even a goal. Totally. Like you, you absolutely. And I think, and that is a hundred percent a result of failure tolerance. It is Jill. And this is like so normal that we see people just like you worked really hard for something. And in your mind, you're like, I failed. I fell short. That was exhausting. Like I did things that I like, and you're just left like happening in your mind instead of going, I like, I want you just to literally flip the script on that because you gained 300 points. Good for you. You increased, you never would have known right. how far you could have gone if you would not have set that bigger goal. In fact, right. probably realistically, and I don't know this, but realistically, if you would not have pushed for Emerald and grown that 300 points, and if you wouldn't have like gotten your place or yourself to a place to be able to do that, you would probably be significantly below where you currently are today had you right. not done that and then what would that be doing to your mindset like what would you be doing there and so right. I, mean, I think there's a lot of us on this call that are showing up here and we don't we don't have a goal we don't have a timeline for the goal we're just we love plexus like we we have a big picture like I want to be a diamond one day and we show up and we keep 
But if you're not playing on the edge of your abilities and if you're not getting yeah. out of your comfort zone and if you're not doing new things and embracing that, like falling on your face. So I'm an English teacher, right? I was yeah. an English teacher. Like the first draft is the most frustrating things with my kids. They like give me a, their paper and they're like, well, will you read my paper? And I like get the paper and I tear it to shreds. And to me, that process is like amazing. I'm like, here's your crappy first draft. Yay, your first draft was so terrible. But I'm so proud of you. Like you had to do the crappy first draft before you can go in and edit that paper and then make a less crappy second draft. And then it's like five times before, okay, the final paper is something you're so proud of. Well, you should have looked at that and, and rewritten it and thought through it and found more sources and blah, 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 all the things. But we're just so, we just want our first draft to be awesome. Well, it never is ever. Right. So here, I mean, here's a question that I, I wanted to ask you. So the other thing I'm telling myself is I can, I can go Emerald whenever I set my mind to it. I just don't know if I want to do it right now. Like, what am I doing? Am I trying to prevent myself from failure? Am I, I don't know. Like, yeah, you're totally like, self-sabotaging. Like I could totally, I mean, I could do it this month, although my points are down to like in the 1100s again, but you know, it's new, it's a new year. I could do it this month. I could do next month, but yet in the meantime, 95% of my team is radio silent crickets. Mm -hmm. My, my business builders out to lunch, got a new job in a weird place. They just moved all these things. And so it's like me, right? So I, you know, I would have to, you know, do the hard thing and like raise new people. Um, but I could do it if I decided I was going to. I mean, and of course, opposition from my husband, who's like, you're always doing that plexus stuff and the house isn't clean, you know, blah, blah. Um. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you answered your own question. I mean, I feel like it's, there's a lot yeah. of self-sabotage. There's a lot of negative self, like talk in there. And it's like, you know what to do. You know what to yeah. do. You know that you, you probably want to go to your team and say like, I'm, I'm building my leadership team for 2023. I love you. I love working this business with you. Cast vision with your people again, right? Come in, say, I know you're doing this. I know you're doing that. But like when you got started, what was your vision for this? How can we, how can we cast that vision again? Which I, could be like a whole other like vision casting training at the beginning of the year. I think we all need to be doing that. Um, find your leadership team, make a set a plan in place. Don't be frantic. Don't be messy. Don't be sloppy with it. You know, learn, look back at the last time you ran for Emerald and see where, what you can, how you can grow from that because you don't want to be, just do the same thing over again. Right. You don't want to be in that same position. You want to learn and grow from that and do it better. It's like, okay, well, we need to be working at the beginning of the month. I need to be, last time I had three leaders running with me towards Emerald, but when I, in the month that I run for Emerald, I'm committed to having five. I want my five people that are running with me. They're going to have their goals. They're going to be reaching their goals. Like be strategic in what you're doing and learn from it the last time. But yeah, I almost said to Christy when she was like, my goal was senior Ruby for this year. And she's like, and I'm sitting at Ruby. I was literally like, what I wanted to say, what I really wanted to say was, girl, let's see, we got nine days left. <laughs> I mean, the year is not over yet. Like, and the thing is, I'm not saying like, set the goal for senior Ruby. Let's say you're at 400 points today. Are you going to close that gap? Probably not, but you have nine days left. Why are y'all sitting on your goals for 2023? Like, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. Let's work our goals at the end of the year, have your boundaries in. It's the holidays, like rest, do all the things you need to do, filter out what I'm saying, take what you want and, you know, spit the rest out, but come on. I've had tons of my people, tons of my people go Emerald in December, a lot, several of my people have ranked up in December. So I think that's, I think what's so interesting is that we look back at all of these years and we watch people. I mean, Becky and Ellen literally going Emerald over Thanksgiving. So it wasn't like they waited even until the end of the month. I mean, we used to rank up 
before, if not on the very last day that subs would run. Like we weren't trying to push things in on the 30th and the 31st. We're ranking up on the 28th because you did all the work ahead of time. All the work was done. All the people were in the system. You just needed to care for them and make sure their orders continued to process. And I just think like right now, what is your goal for December? Is your goal just three customers and a North Face jacket? Is your goal to crush 2023 with massive goals? Therefore, you're recruiting at least one business builder this month. You are recruiting, which means you're sending out, which means you're probably in conversations with five to 10, which means you're probably in initial conversations with 20 to 30. Like you have to go out from your goal right now. And your if your goal for 2023 is to have five leaders, why that you actually are running with month after month, then do you have those five leaders right now or do you need to go get them? And I just think like, you've got to set up all the things. Melissa, you gave us so much content to really look over and go, am I willing to fail hard? Am I willing to grow from failure? Am I willing to not look at everything as a failure? Because to me, that's the victim mentality of, oh, I sucked at that. Oh, I said I was going to go senior Ruby and I did it. And then y'all don't just like let off the gas a little bit. You're like park, pulling to the side, braking, getting out of the car. Like you're like, you know what? I'm just going to walk away from it for, for a little bit. And I'm like, the traffic is passing you by. Like you're, you're not growing by walking away from it from a little bit. This is a business. Decide what your hour or two hours is every day during, you know, take Christmas off, take Christmas day, you know, Eve off, like do your family stuff and the things you need to do, but it's a job, like get to the work that needs to happen so that it's not, you're not constantly going, it's a failure. It's a failure. It's, it's a business. It's a business that I'm reworking. I'm relearning. I'm reestablishing goals. And so Melissa, you gave us so much great content. Um, every single person on here should have one nugget they are pulling away and putting in action into like actual actionable items today before you know you go to sleep tonight is you should put something you've thought about today into action and then continue to do that and rework it and figure out how it doesn't work and rework it better. So Melissa, you know, I love you. I'm so excited about this. I think it was perfect timing for so many people um, wrapping up 2022 and going into 2023. I cannot wait to see what y'all do in 23. I cannot wait to see all of the rank up announcements this month, all of the rank up announcements for everyone for the next nine days that you're like, okay, that's it. I'm going in. I know exactly what I need to do and who I need to lock arms with. Y'all have a phenomenal rest of your week, a very Merry Christmas. I hope you do take time and really just sit with Christ and who he is and what he's done for you and why he came to earth and why we are celebrating and why the season matters. I hope that you sit and you reflect only on who Christ is. Um, and then um, we wrap up 2022 and go into 2023. So blessed and grateful. Uh, Andrea, for- yeah, I'm so sorry to interrupt your sweet sermon. Will you yeah. remind people about the call tomorrow night? Oh yeah. Uh, good call. So after you think about Christ, just before that, Tomorrow night, we have a favorite things party that we are doing. We are giving away a bunch of stuff in the midst of all of it. We're going to, you know, let them know about specials that are happening and all, you know, what our products are and all those things. So invite every single person you can think of to this favorite things call, um, especially the people that you're like, I don't ever have anything to invite them to. They don't really want to know about Plexus. Great. Come earn a Stanley cup or Stanley Tumblr, whatever it is. Uh, but that's a great way to just get people connected to who we are. And um, as we kind of start to um, wrap up the year with all of the specials that corporate has going for us, I know Melissa probably has a ton of things going on on for her team, um, wrapping up the year and starting into the first of the year as so many people have New Year's resolutions. You are in the prime of your business. Don't let this time pass you by. Ellen Ford signed up on New Year's Eve. I promise you, you could have your next diamond signing up on New Year's Eve. But I promise you the reason she signed up is because she was like, what in the heck is happening on your Facebook? Why do you keep sharing this stuff? Oh, wait, it's going to help me. Okay, I'll take two. And she signed up and within weeks she was getting a paycheck and she said, I want more of these. And that just literally was a compounding effect. And by November, she was Emerald. So whoever you sign up between now and New Year's Eve could be your next Emerald, your next star leg over this next year. So don't let this time and this opportunity pass you by. We'll see y'all next year.